If you want to see how I get a flawless base like this on Clockable, then stay tuned. Hi, I'm Latifa Olu. If you know me, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if it's your first time. So I get asked a lot, Lou, how do you get your skin to look so flawless? And honey, it starts with a flawless base. You can do everything you like with your eyes, but if the base ain't looking cute, the base ain't looking cute so for me personally i do like to use a primer but i think you can skip primer if it's not for you it's fine but i'm going to show you exactly what i do to get a flawless base okay so the first thing i do is i like to use a primer my primer of choice for today i use loads there's different types that i will use but my primer of choice today is the bobby brown face base which looks like this i'm going to take a little bit of this put it all over my face now my eyebrows are already done um i've got a separate video on how i do my brows so you can find that if you want to have a look but yeah, I'm going to put it all over my face because it gives your foundation something to adhere to. Perfect. What I like to do specifically is I like to set my primer. Now, I have normal skin, but I get oily around here and sometimes on my forehead. It looks like I'm oily now, but it's my lights. And the reason I like to put powder on it is because it gives me opportunity for something for it to soak up. I mean, it will get shiny eventually, but it's something for it to soak up. But also, I find when you put a powder underneath to set your face, this might not work if you've got dry skin, by the way, it gives you like a flawless base to put the foundation on. The foundation seems to adhere to a smoother base and just gives it... It just looks nicer on the skin. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Laura Mercier in medium deep and I'm going to press it into my skin. I'm going to give you an example of what I do. So I'm using the brush today purely because I can't find a sponge. I probably threw it away. Oh no, there it is. I'll just find it. I'm going to give you an example of what I do. So now what I'll do, I'll take a sponge and then I'll just press into my face like this. And I kind of just press and roll. You want it to kind of not just sit on the skin, but you don't need to put too much either. It's not a huge amount. But also, if you look, I'm going to come in a bit closer. I'm going to do this side and not the other side so you can see the difference. Normally I don't do under my eye, I don't know why I just did that, but normally I don't do under my eye because my under eye is quite dry anyway. But look, so this is the eye, just the primer, face just the primer. And it starts with the primer that's been set and it just gives a nice smooth surface my foundation so i'm gonna finish the rest of my face and then we'll move on to the next thing powdered okay so for today's foundation i'm gonna go on something that's not too heavy because i like my foundation kind of sheer to be honest with you because by the end i finish doing concealer etc it kind of looks full anyway so i like not to go in too full because full coverage sometimes can give you a mask like appearance so i like to go in a little bit lighter plus i haven't got that much i need to cover and you can spot cover if you haven't got too many but anyway so next we're going to go in with hooders, faux filter, skin finish, foundation stick. It looks like this. Now as you can see, my base is now, it looks really smooth as a base. So I won't need much. So for this, for instance, I'm going to do this side of my face first. We're going to just go in like that. And like that. And like that. And then I'm going to, I'm going to do my forehead because I'm not one of those people who can avoid doing their forehead. I don't understand people do it, but fair enough to them. So then what I would do then, I will grab a stippling brush and I'm just going to pounce that into my skin. So I like to do, rather than, I don't like to drag like this because I don't think it, lives in, it leaves a nice finish on the skin. Personally, I prefer to just pounce it into the skin because I want it to be skin-like. If you see, this is a fantastic foundation. So I'm going to finish this side. Oh, look at that. This foundation is amazing. But seriously, look so i'm just going to pounce it into the skin and with a brush like this my preference is a brush is another thing my preference is actually a brush over a sponge but i do use a sponge so what i'll do is i'll pounce it in like this and then when i finish doing my whole face i will go in with a sponge like so and i will roll it to pick up any excess product and in places like your hairline what it does is it blends it seamlessly into your hairline so you get this kind of seamless blend unclockable boom look at that let's get into it look at that it's beautiful mm -hmm. so this is the face completed look at that that is beautiful me yeah, i like it now here's the thing we've got our base on we're looking good everything's looking one but 
low key will look like an egg. So what we need to do now is put some dimension back into the face. And the first step to doing that is concealer. Now my trick, if you've been on my channel, you will know, my trick is always to use two types of concealer. One is a skin tone and one is a highlight. Now, some of this just comes down to preference. Today I'm gonna to use the Pat McGrath Sublime Concealer in shade 26, which is my actual shade. And the first thing I'm gonna do, and this is what I mean by it comes down to preference. If you're the kind of person who just wants your under eye to look even, you can stop here. But if you're the kind of person who wants a highlighted under, light, under eye, then you just go a little bit lighter with the next shade. But here's what I do. So I take this and it's quite a thick full coverage. So this is why I don't really use full coverage foundations because stuff like this is quite full coverage. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit here, a little bit here, and a little bit there. That's all I need for that. Same thing on the other side. A little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit there. Now the key to make sure that you don't crease is to let it sit. It's literally that simple. Literally let it sit so you get as much coverage as possible and it's more or less dried down by the time you're blending it out. I say more or less, it's nearly dried down by the time you're um, blending it out. Next I'm gonna go in with the shade Cappuccino and this is the NYX Born to Glow. So I'm just trying to show different price ranges as well. So, hence this is like, a, I think it's like seven quid. So, and I'm gonna take this and put it in the inner corner, just so. Voila. Now, if I decide later, depends on what I'm doing, but if I decide later, actually, I want a bit more coverage, then I just add a bit more of everything. But this is what I do. Then next, we're gonna take the highlight shade. I'm gonna take it down my nose, because like I said, we're trying to put some dimension back into the face because we kind of took it all out. So we're gonna go down the nose and then just under here. So this, we're kind of giving this area a highlight. It's a natural highlight, like you would be, if, like, if you look at your normal skin before you put on makeup, you'll find this part is generally quite darker because where the sun hits, and this part here is usually the lightest part of your face. So we're kind of naturally mimicking that. We're trying to put that dimension back into the face. So, I don't like to go ham here. That's me. And then for my halo here, I'll just put a little bit like this. And what I like to do as well, is I like to take the skin color and put that just over it like this. So that way it gives me something to blend into and the color's not too stark. Boom. Right, now I would let that sit for about five minutes. But me, I don't like to waste a stand up. So while that's sitting, I like to keep myself distracted and I will often do my eyeshadow. And the reason I do that, twofold. So I get to do my eyeshadow, but then also I get to clean it up. Because of this bit of concealer here, when I finish doing my eyeshadow, when I blend this out, I get to clean up my eyeshadow. So I can be as messy as I like. So next we're gonna blend this out. Okay, so I've done my eyes, and the reason I'm doing that, as I said before, okay. Okay, so I've done my eyes, that's all done, and now it's time to blend. Okay, now, yes, we've got the concealer on, but what I like to do as well as the next step is I like to add my contour. Now, the reason I like to add my contour before I blend out my concealer is so that I can mesh them together, as opposed to finishing this and then adding contour over it and then having to go back and forth to try and get the, the blend to be seamless. So I like to add them together. So today what I'm gonna be using is Huda's Tantor, and I've got it in tan and I've got it in medium. I'm gonna use the tan to sculpt, right there and i'm going to use the medium for my nose because i just don't like to use too much of a harsh contrast on my nose i don't think it's necessary quite frankly so what i'm going to do first i'm going to take it on the end of my brush like this and this line here is a line i'm trying to sculpt now naturally looking at me i have chubby cheeks i have cheekbones as you can see but we want to enhance them and the way for me to enhance them is to sculpt this area here so that it looks like my cheeks are lifted so what I'm gonna do, if I do this, you can see the line. Now, you guys might not be able to see, but if I do this, there's a line there. Thing is though, I'm not gonna take it this far down because that's quite unnatural. I'm gonna take it to about here and then it will give the illusion of my cheek being lifted. So I'm gonna go from here. You might be able to hear, we live right next to a school, which my children go to, and the kids are out in the playground. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I'm gonna stop just about there, because you don't need to go near that one. Right, now I'm gonna take the lighter color. So I still want to contour, but I just don't need it to be so deep on my forehead because I plan to bronze as well. So I just don't need it to be so sculpted on the forehead. Plus, with my forehead, the only thing I'm trying to do is create a bronze, really, and to make it a tiny bit smaller. So when I say contour in the forehead, that's what I'm doing. Now, overall, a contour is not necessary. If you like the angles in your face, as they are once your makeup is finished and you don't need to do it. For me personally, I've got a massive forehead. Look at her, look at her. So I just wanna make her a tiny bit smaller and we're just we're gonna create the illusion of a shadow. And that's how we're gonna do it. And we're gonna bronze it up as well. 
the shadow is going to give us our shape and the bronze is kind of kind of warm us up a bit so let me just quickly contour my nose as well so we can blend it all out at the same time so then with my nose i'm just going to take a little bit down here i like to bring it close now i'm not trying to reshape my nose i'm trying to put it back because when you put foundation on you eradicate all your features you're making a clean canvas so for me it's about putting it back because i like my big old nose okay now to blend this out this side what i'm going to do is i'm going to lift everything's going to be lifted so i like to pat on the line and then lift you want your face to go this way not down so i'm going to lift and as you can see you get now we're creating a shadow I'm going to do the same thing and then we're going to lift we're literally just creating a shadow and then we're going to take this side and we're going to blend it into the hairline i've placed it exactly where i want it so now what we're going to do is just blend it into the hairline we're just creating a nice shadow i'll do the same thing on this side so we're going to pat on the line and then we're going to lift so we're just creating a hollow for me personally i need to create a hollow to make my cheekbones lift so as you can see it's down here if I do this, it's, okay, it's making it more snatched, as I, can, I should say, for me. Without this, I just have round cheeks for me, which is fine, but I want to look a little chiseled, a little sculpted. So it's going to go up. Blend, 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 blend. If you're in a rush, don't put on too much, because that way, if, you're not, if you don't blend it properly, it's not a big deal. Now, notice I said I'm not taking it any further than there. If you look here, this is where my, when I pull, that line naturally stops anyway. If I take it too far down, it's just going to look unnatural. You can do it if you like, but it's just going to look unnatural. And you know what? Everyone's preference. I know girls that go for that really highlighted under eye look and it really suits them. It's just not for me, but it actually really suits them. There's Mella Child. It really suits her. She's got... I could lick her skin. Her skin is beautiful, but it really suits her. That kind of highlighted really suits her, but for me, so no. Okay. Now I like to take what's left and chisel out my jaw really gently I prefer to do it this way than to actual add than act to actually add product I just think it gives a softer blend this way okay so that's the contour blend out now we're going to come back to that if there are, if it doesn't look right we're going to come back to that after we do the under eye so what I like to use I like to use a brush and again with most things I use a brush first and then I go back in with a beauty blender to make everything just look Mm. see me i like i could do this whole look in about 20 minutes but more times than not i like to take my time and make sure everything looks flawless and this is my kind of zen time as well so anyway what we're going to do is we're going to take the outside edge and we're going to pat it see how we just patted the outside edge and we're going to try and diffuse that into the skin so before we've even started you're seeing it's diffusing into the skin and we're going to slowly work our way up my reason for doing this is so that I, if I start from the top and move down, I'm going to drag a lot of the product down. So I'm trying to avoid doing that. So I start with the edge and then it's harder to kind of diffuse the edge. It's doable. It's just harder. Now, remember I said earlier about the um, eyeliner? I'm going to take my brush here. You can do this bit of a beauty blender as well. I'm just going to stretch it like that. And it gives me a nice crisp line that I then blend into my contour. Look at that. Seamless. And we just blend, blend, blend. And we do the same thing for the front part. We take the edge first and then we go inside and we blend. Just so. You take it up the side of your nose as well because we want it to meet the other contour line, which is this one we created. Now you can see instantly, see how this line is quite harsh? I normally wouldn't use this much product, but you see how this line is quite harsh? This one's already immediately softened because we brought the product to meet the contour line. You can bring it into it, it's not a problem. And this is this side done see and we haven't dragged the highlight right down it's kind of st it's stuck in this area which is where we want it which is where i want it anyway for my face shapes where i want it and then if you're happy you can leave it like that but me i like to go back and forth so then i'll get my contour brush and i'll make them marry and then back out so it's all marrying it's all seamless there we go look at that mm-hmm now you can go back and i always do i always go back with a sponge for instance and i will press along the line especially when i'm doing a contour like a nose contour i don't spread it because i don't want it i don't need it to go any wider where it is is fine but i will 
press into the line. See? Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to spin this around and I'm going to press on my nose because I want to keep the concealer where it is. So I'm just literally going to press it. And because it's been sitting for so long, it won't move too much. It will just disappear nicely in place. Can you see? And then I go back in and I just press along the nose to make that line as natural as possible. Now, because I do it naturally, quite natural, because I'm not trying to sculpt the shit out of my nose. I'm literally just trying to put it back. Excellent. So now I'm going to blend out the rest of my face. Exactly the same thing I've done on this side. I'm going to do on this side and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we're completely blended out. Now, a little tip. If you are, when you finish, if you have a look at any part and you're like, ooh, that's not quite blended how I want it. Go back in with the same foundation brush you used. No extra product. And just neaten things up. You know, if you see anything you don't like, just neaten things up. This is your opportunity to do it before we set it. I mean, it'll be all right after we set it, but this is the opportunity to do it before we set it. Cause you, and you're using a foundation shade to do so. Perfect. Okay, now it's time to set. Now I'm gonna use the Laura Mercier in Honey to set my under eyes. Now, one thing about me is I am a big believer in less is more. So as you can see, this is the face as it is. Some people like to leave like this, that's up to them. Me, I can't, purely because every time I touch my face, it's gonna transfer into wherever I'm touching and I hate that. So I'm gonna take a little bit of powder on a brush this small, and I'm just gonna pat it in, I'm gonna tap it off. My eye, under eye is really dry, super, super, super dry. Oh, it can be really dry if you put too much powder. So what I like to do is pat it off, and I start here, I deposit most of the product here, because that's where most of the product's gonna get deposited. And then I start to pat it everywhere else. See? And you go instantly from being shiny here and dewy to softly mattified. If you're one of those people who's extra oily, you might feel a bit different about this. But I personally think for your under eye area, people's under eye areas generally don't get greasy. I could be wrong, but generally doesn't get greasy. For, so for this part of your face, you don't need too much. So same thing again. And because we let our concealer sit, it won't crease. So we don't need to go ham absolutely necessary. I'm just going to bring it over all the bits that I put concealer on. As you can see, that is it. Same thing with my chin. You put concealer there. You just pat it in gently. Same thing with my forehead because we put concealer there. Again, put the, the majority of the product you want to put in the biggest part of your face. There. Because that way if you put too much, there's space to diffuse it. But you shouldn't need to. If you're using a small brush like this, you absolutely shouldn't need to. I mean, look at that. I'm going to take it down our nose. Like I said, everywhere we put concealer, we're going to set. There you go. Then like, what I like to do, as per usual, everything I say I do, I go over a sponge afterwards and I press it into the skin. Mm -hmm. You can definitely hear those kids screaming. It's lunchtime. Okay, cool. So now I've, I've literally set all the places I put my concealer, so all the places that I highlighted. Now I'm going to need to set the perimeter. I need to set my contour and I need to just set the perimeter of my face too because, you know, we're not trying to transfer. So I've recently found this Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder and what I really like about it is even after you powder, you don't look powdered, if that makes any sense, because normally after this part I would spray to bring my face back to life but this you don't need to I'm going to need it for this bit but for the rest of my face you don't need to and I'm going to show you exactly what I mean so I take a little bit of powder and I take it on my chin I'll take it around here so all the places that I don't need highlighted and it's okay if you overlap you don't have to keep strips aligned it's okay but you want to pounce but it's weird like it's it's powdered but it doesn't look powdered I can't explain it, but it's, it gives a really nice finish. So if I get in close here, this is set. If I show you this side, there's still a sheen to it. So I'm going to go in on that side as well so you can see the difference. Well, so you can see it all together. And you're going to see it's set, but it doesn't look powdered. Not in the same way my under eye looks powdered, if that makes sense. And I probably used less product on the under eye as well. Right, I'm going to take it all up in here. I don't need too much because I'm going to put bronzer and I'm going to use a powder bronzer, so I don't need to go crazy over there because the powder bronzer kind of acts as a setting powder as well as well to be honest and you want to, don't forget to bring it down we're not trying to be clockable and if you've got a head tie on girls pull it back there 
So that is the face. Now for me, I like to, I don't, I don't love that powdery look. I think if you're a shiny girl, you might not want to do this step, but because I am not, I like to go in with a setting spray. Today I'm going to use the Morphe Luminous Setting Spray, and I'm just going to spray my face to get the powder to sit in my skin, so it's giving you that two hour look, two hours later look. I'm covering up my hairline, I don't want to curl back up. And I let that sit for a second. And then yet again, I take my trusty dusty sponge and let it dry down a little bit and then I just start to pounce the product in. So for this side, I'll just, there we go. And this side, I'll do the same. But we've lost that powdery kind of feel now. And I'm gonna take it up my forehead. And it's another opportunity to make sure everything's, everything's just blended seamlessly. Excellent. Look at that, look at this base. Get into it. We're not even done. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly run through the last couple steps that I like to do. So I'm gonna highlight next. And the reason I highlight first before I put blush and bronzer on, because I don't want it to be beaming, and I find if you do it first and put the other tops, other things on top of it, it's not. Now that said, I said all of that to say this, I'm gonna put loads on. Now the reason I'm gonna put on loads on is because my final step of makeup involves dusting with powder and it will dull it down. And I like that kind of glow from within. And I like, if you look at that, see, I've used this tiny brush. And if you see, look at how dispersed it is. It's not just kind of lumbering in one place. And I literally just pat, I don't swipe, I just pat. Now, if you have textured skin, you might want to skip this bit. And I'll tell you why, because it will, it will show any unevenness. You, if you use a cream highlighter, though, that could work. But we're, going to, we're trying to go for a flawless base. We don't want anything, you know, showing us off, so, or showing out. So we're just better there. A little bit on top lip. I do do my nose but I just take my finger and I will just pat it there and I only go up to the middle of the, my nose and then there and we just rub it cute there you go look at that pretty right for today's blush we're going to use one from Pat McGrath's divine collection divine blush collection and it is electric bloom which looks like this now I'm going to grab a brush like this and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pat it like this. So just going to pat. Ah, oh, I picked up a lot of product. <laughs> oh shit. I always do this. But it's fine. When we dust our face afterwards, we can dull it down. It, right now I'm rethinking my life. I'm like, do I want to put this on my Yes, I'm going to. Okay, so when we start here in the middle. Remember what I would say? You want to deposit the most amount of product on the biggest part of your face. Now for me, because I don't want you to be able to see loads of product here, I'm going to put it here. See? And then I'm going to bring it forward and then I'm going to take it back. And that's the key to not having excess anywhere. Now I'm gonna make sure that's thoroughly blended before I add it any more. If I'm happy with it, I leave it. If I'm not, I put more. <laughs> so I'm gonna do the same thing again. And go back and forth. But I just don't want the majority of the product anywhere near the balls of my cheek. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we're gonna start here. And then bring it around. Yeah, it's gonna go back and forth until you're happy. And I'm happy with that. We've added a soft dimension. But you can still see the highlight. Now, last but not least, I'm going to use bronzer. And today I'm gonna to use the Charlotte Tilbury. Now, I generally tend to use two bronzers. I just love, I love bronzer and what it does for you. So I'm gonna go in with the small end first. Pat it a little bit, bum, bum, bum. And then what I'm gonna do is, now there's my contour line right there. I'm gonna go a little bit higher. Just there. So everywhere, the sun would naturally touch me. And the same thing, you wanna go up. So let's go up that way first, into the hairline, and then slightly flick it out. There we go. And we're gonna go all over our hairline. And do the same thing on this side. There's your contour line. We kinda of wanna keep that just a little bit. So we're gonna go just above it. And then flick it up and flick it out. So now you're starting to see the warmth coming through. But you can still see the contour. And by that I mean when I smile, we got cheekbones that I don't really have. So we're gonna go here. And then I like to take the other end and disperse it. Just make sure it's nicely dispersed. We are not looking clockable. I'm gonna use the bottom end as well, just go into my hairline a bit. And then flip it around so that we're dispersed. 
Now I love bronzer. So I'm gonna put in another one. I think today I'm gonna to go with Coco Naughty because I don't want I don't want to be too sculpted. I'm only going to lunch with my husband. And I'm gonna take the bigger end. But this is just me. This bit you can skip. I just like to do this bit. Bigger end and then I'm just gonna dust over my forehead. Because I love I love bronzer. Oh my god, I love bronzer. Bronzer's probably one of my favourite things apart from eyeshadow. There you go. Now when I saw warm. Listen, in a few months time, I'm gonna be going for that kind of burnt look. But you see, it's nice and warm. It's together, it's put together, and then take it along your jawline as well, because you want everything to look seamless. You wanna use the big end for this so that it's dispersed nicely. Or a bigger brush so it's dispersed and bring it down so it's dispersed nicely. And there we have it. Mm -hmm. Now, to finish up, we are going to dust the face. With what you say? Mm, a finishing powder. Now my finishing powders of choice today are going to be the Pat McGrath Sublime Under Eye Setting Powder. Now what I like to do, this is just literally, if you've got any lines that just aren't, just aren't blurred beautifully or it just kind of takes that away. Or if you put on too much blush, it just gives you that seamless finish. So you take a little bit like that, when I say a little, a little, blow it and then you just dust it all, up, all over your under eye. If you've messed up your eyeshadow and it's coming down too far and it's just looking a bit blotchy, this will sort all of that out. So bend it down, dust it, you want to dust it over everything. So my eyes, my highlighter that I've put there, I'm going to dust it over it. And as you can see, it's giving me that kind of glow from within, as opposed to a stark glow. Perfect example. My nose contour right now is looking a little stark, or for my likings anyway. So I'm going to do firstly, I'm going to do that, blend it how I want it. And then I'm going to take the dust in, the magic powder, I'm just going to dust it over it to soften any lines and I'm not sure if, if you guys can see it if the camera will pick it up but it instantly softens and blurs we're going to take it up here to the forehead and we're using a slightly lighter color here because we want to still keep the kind of highlighted look here we go you don't need loads and then for the rest of my face I'm going to take the Charlotte Tilbury powder and I use shades three and four interchangeably what's this this is three I use them interchangeably I'm not that fussed about it and I take a nice wide fluffy brush like this dust it here and then I just do the rest of my face so the blush the bronze everything you just dust it over really lightly get your forehead and any part that you may have skipped may have missed it just gives you this beautiful finish voila Right now to finish, I'm going to use a setting spray. I'm going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray. I'm just going to do that. And yet again, I'm going to do the same thing. Your sponge is literally your best utensil because what I'm going to do, I'm going to let that set for a little bit. Then I'm going to pump it in to bring my skin back to life. If you've that setting powder, finishing powder, sorry, I should say, has, you know, dulled it or made it a bit powdery. Et voilà. And this is the finished look. And this will last all our day. All our day. Like it's, it's. <laughs> now, this is an easy breezy look for me, but this will work whatever you want to use. If you want to use a heavy foundation, if you want to use a lighter concealer, this will work. Do it this way. This will work. Also, remember that your sponge is your best friend. Brushes are wonderful. And the reason I don't use a sponge to apply my foundation, A, it's too messy for me. I don't like it, my fingers dirty. But B, it takes too long. And I don't like the finish that, I, I don't like the ultimate finish that it gives you in terms of pressing it into your skin with the foundation. I, I prefer to go in with the brush and then I use the sponge to take off the excess. That's another thing as well, just so you know, not once during this whole application did I wet this sponge. This sponge was dry the whole time because I want it to pick up excess I want it to press powders into my skin and it can't do that effectively if it's wet so for me my preference is a dry sponge but again it's also because I am using brushes so those are my preferences but I just think together should I, should I get close should I, should I, mm -hmm. you see how the blend is seamless get into it yes get into it so this is how I do my flawless base. Next I'll do a video on eyeshadow, easy peasy, one shade eyeshadow, and then we're going to kind of step it up from there, then we'll do like adding other colours, blends, etc, etc, we're going to have some fun. But let's go back to basics, this is how I get my flawless base. <laughs> 